Welcome to Blender. In this video, I'll be going over the UI and its various tabs. When you start up Blender, you get this splash screen, and as soon as you click off of here, it's gone. So up in the top left corner here, you can click the Blender icon and reopen a splash screen. The next tab is the file browser. Uh, this is where you can export uh, your mesh to get it put into a game or put it on the marketplace somewhere online. Uh, edit is for controlling Blender's preference options. Render is where you can render animations or images. Window is where you can access the console. And the help button gives you some help things. You can look at the tutorial and you can get to uh, the manual in here. So next we have our workspace tabs. Uh, the first one is layout, but these tabs uh, kind of give you an idea of how you want to proceed through your workflow to get your model done. When I first started, I had no idea <laughs> that I, I could actually just go through the, the processes here and kind of work out how to finish my model. Uh, the scene and the layout tab starts out with a cube, a light source, and a camera. You can use this layout area to uh, bring in other objects and do some basic block modeling. You can set up light lighting to make your scene look good. Uh, set up the camera to do renders and uh, animations and simulations and the timeline down here is used for animations and simulations. And that's the layout tab. Each of the workspace tabs has its own T menu and in panel and it also they also have right click for the uh, context menus and these are all window specific so if you're over here and you hit uh, right click it's going to bring you up a different context menu than this one or this one the next tab is the modeling tab whatever you have selected in the layout tab when you go to modeling it automatically gets put into edit mode up here um, you can manipulate your mesh by moving these vertex around and adding loop cuts and things and we'll get into that but basically it's for editing the mesh. The viewport itself, the timeline is gone just to give you some more space to work with. The next tab is the sculpting tab and the sculpting tab is used to do organic modeling. So you have all these tools over here that you can basically work like a, a clay sculpture artist. The next tab is the UV editing tab. It is used for creating roadmaps for your textures to follow when applied to your mesh. The next tab is the texture paint tab. You can use this tab to uh, paint on your model by hand and you can also stencil images on your model if you have a little decal or something or an image you want to stencil onto your model. Our next tab is the shading tab. You can use this tab to import uh, images that you've downloaded or made yourself in a paint program to apply to your model, or you can use the node system down here to create your own textures procedurally. The next tab is your animation tab. It's for making animations. Uh, going on, the next tab is the rendering tab. Um, I don't personally use the rendering tab. The compositing tab, uh, is used for manipulating your render outputs. Um, example would be like making shadows for an object that you want to upload to a game that doesn't have a dynamic lighting system to actually make shadows itself. The last two tabs are the geometry nodes, which I won't be covering. Uh, I haven't even got into this stuff yet. And the scripting, if you know Python, you can write scripts here. You also have your little plus symbol where you can add specific ones like video editing if you want to do video editing, uh, VFX, uh, and all the general stuff. So you can you can set up all these tabs, delete them and remove them and add them here in whatever orders you like and kind of create your own uh, workflow up here. Okay, that's it for the workspace tabs. Next I'm going to go over the outliner with you and I'm going to jump to layout to go over the outliner. So the outliner is for creating new collections to keep your objects organized. You can rename, select, delete your objects here. 
and you can choose if you want your objects visible in the 3D viewport to be rendered by the camera when baking a texture or rendering an image in your scene. Uh, to rename an object, you can double click on it and just rename it. So we'll name this Q2. You can add a new collection by right clicking and going to the new collection button. And you can name the new collection something you want, like maybe you want it to be uh, low poly objects. You can move objects to different collections just by holding down on the just left click holding and dropping it into the new collection and it'll be there. You can also, like I said, change the visibility of the object. So you can click the little eye here and it will hide the cube. And if you click the little camera, it doesn't allow the camera to see the object when you're baking a texture or rendering an image to make a make a photograph. And that's it for the outliner. The next thing I'm going to go over is the properties area. It's right below the outliner and it has a bunch of tabs where you can change the properties of different things in Blender. The first example is going to be the rendering tab where we can change the rendering engine to cycles which gives us realistic lighting for our bakes in Second Life. Another example is the modifiers tab where we can add modifiers like mirror or array or boolean or bevel and these op these modifiers change the mesh. The last example is going to be the materials tab. You use it to assign materials to your mesh. One last thing I want to cover is how to resize windows and collapse windows and make extra windows so in the corner of each window is you you can mouse over it and get a little crosshair and if you drag the crosshair you can collapse windows one way or the other I don't want to do it there if you right click you can split an area and make a new window once you make this new window, you can change it here. Each one of these windows has a spot where you can change what's displayed in the window. So like this one, maybe I want to put a reference image in. So I can change this to an image editor. If I can find the image editor, there it is. And you can just drop a texture in there uh, or a reference image that you can use to model with. Uh, to collapse these, you can right click on it and join areas, and then I can either join it up and it'll make that whole area the bottom one, or join it down and it will collapse that window on itself. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.